It's 20 minutes after 7 o'clock. Thank you so much for staying with the morning show here on ETV. Now, South Africans may soon need a prescription for a range of medicines that are currently accessible over the counter at pharmacies. The South African Health Products Regulatory Authority is considering upscheduling codeine medicines such as painkillers, adcodol, and uh, neurofen plus that are currently scheduled to medicines. But how will this affect the public health sector and those that are dependent on access to these medications. Well, for more on this, we joined in studio by Mlungisi Wondo, who is from the Health Products Regulatory Authority. Mlungisi, welcome to the morning show. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Clem. Mm. Let's talk about these medicines. Uh, why is there this call for them to be available on prescription only? Thanks, uh, Clement. Uh, firstly, I need to clarify and minimize the panic out there that uh, Supra is upscheduling the mm -hmm. Schedule 2 medicines. Uh, it was one of the options we looked at. Yeah. So it's not really that we are upscheduling okay. tomorrow or next mm. year. It's one of the options we are looking at. Yeah. To answer your question then, it was based on the abuse and misuse of mm. your coding containing products. As you will be aware of the abuse by kids at schools where they will take your coding containing medicines, mix it with your soft drinks and and take those to be high. So mm. the, the basis are from that angle then, that what can we do to pro protect the public? Yeah. However, there's many uh, actions uh, SAPRA has taken to protect the public. Uh, is the reason we look at more actions is because we are worried we, it's not stopping. We, as you can see, a lot of reports coming on the abuse. Yeah. Oh, the agent one will be the abuse by the kids, and then yeah. where the medicines will be found, uh, received from pharmacies or medical doctors. However, uh, from the past few years, we've been working with SAPS to come in spaces where people are, are using wrong channels to make yeah. those medicines available. Yeah. Tell me, how do people go about as abusing um, yeah. the codeine containing medicines? I mean, I was shocked yeah. the other day, I found out yeah. that some people use Sprite yes. and then they just put in uh, some codeine and yes. then boom, they are intoxicated. Correct, uh, Clement. Uh, remember now, uh, there's your internet. People yeah. will go research and find out these things, yes. The content. S yes. So it's your cheaper way of getting high mm. um, uh, compared to your other me uh, illicit me uh, medicines you get out there, like your teak or your mm. nyaupe. So this one, if you go to a pharmacy and get your coffee mixture for 20 rands, mm. you can imagine. If you'll get high for 20 rands, then yeah. obviously that will be your option every day. Yeah. Hence, now we looked at those uh, medicines and the worry will be it's not counterfeit medicines, mm. it's not medicines that are brought into the country illegally, it's your yeah. registered medicines. Yeah. Hence, we looked at options how do we control those. Yeah. But to explain and, and also uh, minimize the fear, we work with the manufacturing companies that own those products. They've been helping a lot mm. to look at people uh, on the supply chain that people may be taking those drugs and, okay. and distributing in them illegally. So uh, to minimize the scare as well, is yeah. we're not upscheduling yet. We're looking at those, yes, yeah. as, as, as an option. There are other option. options that there you're looking at. There are other options. Let's well. talk about how you would balance, yeah. if you go for this op option, how yes. would balance controlling this abuse yes. while also ensuring that you know, you do not lose access to the medicines themselves because yeah. I'm sure you'll agree that there are yeah. some people who can't afford to visit a doctor to get the medicine on, yes. on, on prescription. So how would you balance that? Because mm. some people's concerns have been, oh my God, if it's no longer available on yeah. the counter, I don't have 300 rand to go see a private doctor who yeah. can prescribe that for me. True. Uh, that's why now we looked at it as an option, not that, mm. not that we'll do it. Because remember, there are people who will have a genuine cough, mm. who will want uh, maybe mm. a cough suppressant that contains codeine. You can't say you're lying. You can't, exactly. <laughs> However, yeah. uh, at the same time, those will be having pains and they are used to those uh, tablets that mm. will minimize the pain. And now what we're saying is our focus was on the abuse and the misuse. Yeah. And now uh, your question is now how do we make sure that people still access that? Mm. Hence, we're looking at ways not affecting people accessing the healthcare systems. Mm. And also at the same time, we can't let the public be exposed to That's dangerous true. air situations. Yeah. 
So currently we're working with police uh, strictly to look at those people that are moving out of the uh, yeah. legal ways of practicing around the medicines. Mm. Uh, whereby we'll look at, uh, remember we, man we, we license the manufacturers, we license the distributing centers that we call uh, wholesalers. Mm. So we look and get data from those uh, institutions of people who are ordering a lot. That will be your doctors and your, mm. and your pharmacists. Uh, we've had arrests around those working oh, with the okay. police, yes. All right. So we know those areas where we can go and arrest those people who are ordering in big quantities. Remember now your, your worry will be your small people ordering in small quantities like maybe you've seen on papers, mm. people selling on the streets. Mm. You get people selling those medicines on the street and the next to school so kids can access those things easily. Yeah. But we've been working with your, also your bodies that regulate your pharmacies and your uh, doctors mm. to see where we can prevent instead of always reacting when people do the wrong. Yeah, and so the, the focus right now is looking, working with law enforcement officers to try and minimize the abuse, the abuse of the yes. drug in, in ways possible. Yes. Let's talk about the impact on the economy because yes. some people have felt if you mm. start regulating particularly how it's sold, yeah. also in bulks, yeah. that may have an impact on the economy because it's going to affect some pharmaceutical, some yeah. pharmaceutical manufacturers That's like correct. Adcock, for yes. example, yes. because you know, they're the people that, deal, that work in that space. In that space yeah. Are you much concerned about that? Because another argument is... Mm. Our priority should be to make sure the drug is not abused. How it affects the economy is something else. Uh, luckily, we're balancing. Yeah. Hence, we, we're cautious in, in the actions we take. Mm. Uh, to be direct on your question is look at the manufacturers mm. that are producing those products already. Mm. They will be crying, as you are saying, that if we're saying we are scheduling it, then yeah. their sales will go down. Yes. However, luckily, those companies have been working with us to look at patient safety. They know mm. patient safety is one of our mandates. Yes. And in this case, we're not even talking patients. We're yeah. taking people who are not sick, who exactly. are just misusing criminals. The drug. These criminals, yes. we can put it that way. Yeah. So, however, we've been working with the manufacturers in this case, like the company you've, you've mentioned. Yeah. They've been helping us a lot, gave, giving us data of people who may be doing wrongs on the streets. Yeah, all right. Um, Lungisi, thank you for coming through so early in the morning. Yeah. Lungisi yeah. Wondo from the Health Products Regulatory Authority speaking to us about some of the options that they're looking at in, of course, trying to curb the abuse of codeine-containing medicines.